the keto diet. Very, very controversial stuff. Some people say it's incredible. It's the best thing ever for weight loss. It's the best thing for brain health. It's the best thing for athletic performance. And there's other people saying, wait a minute, hold on, not so fast. There's actually a whole bunch of research that suggests maybe those things are not quite true. Uh, there are, in my opinion, uh, many, many people in this field who misrepresent the science, who cherry pick the science to support their particular dietary dogmas and belief systems or their financial agendas. Um, one of the people who I respect the most, maybe the most of anybody in this, in this field as a low carb keto expert is Luis Villasenor. Uh, and I had him on the podcast to discuss. It was a wonderful episode. I highly recommend listening to the full length episode. The link for that is down in the description below, but here's a wonderful little piece of that that provides some, some excellent value. So listen to this little clip and also check out the full length podcast. Enjoy. Mm -hmm. Makes sense? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So let me ask you a question that I, I think will be helpful to, to listeners to just hear this very blunt and direct. Let's say you were on a keto diet, a low carb keto diet, and you were, well, I, let me step back. Let's say you're burning 2,500 calories a day. Okay. And let's say you were on a low carb keto diet that had, you know, virtually zero carbohydrate intake and zero things in the diet that are going to stimulate insulin to a to a high degree uh but you were eating 3000 or 3500 calories would you gain or lose weight in that state mostly uh, you would gain weight if you eat more calories now there's a, another nuance and this is something that's just recently started to you know get across is that not all calories on paper yeah. are exactly yeah. the same on how they interact with our body Sure. Because again, when you when, when I actually I'm in a little debate with some people on the internet, like probably we all are eventually <laughs> on exactly questions like this. But I'm eating three thousand calories on keto and not gaining weight, and I ate two thousand and five hundred or whatever on a high carb diet and I gain weight. Yeah. So it's like what were you eating before, not just the calories, versus what you're eating now. If you eat, for example, highly processed food versus a more whole uh, uh, or nutrient dense food if you have a higher intake of protein now versus before even if those foods may have a little bit more calories on paper your body has to work to metabolize them so a lot of those calories are lost in the metabolic process for example as heat like protein per se especially if you take it from a whole food source depending on how much you eat in one sitting or throughout the day, you may lose in between 15 to 20. In some cases, I read as much as 30% of the calories from protein may be lost as heat versus those same calories just from fat or from sugar. Or again, when uh, food is super processed, your body just takes it in. So it's like almost negligible loss of energy. Where it has, it's not the same if you eat grains and lentils and things like that your body has to break them out uh, digest them assimilate them etc so there's a degree of calories that are lost there so again it's like it's a trick question that a lot of people don't understand yeah. in the end it's how our body the end product that actually uses yeah and but, another thing that's but, also like just to add here yeah the insulin sensitivity of the person the metabolic health also a little affects a little bit the thermic effect of foods like people that have a very slow metabolism or that are metabolically damaged they seem to get a very uh let's say a nil effect from example from thermogenic effects from carbohydrates versus a very insulin sensitive person an insulin sensitive person may it's the classic example of these people that are super lean and they can eat for you know five times a day or six and the more they eat they even lose more weight right there, there are people like that because they're burning all the, those uh, calories just by trying to digest them and on the other hand there are people that maybe just eating one time a day but maybe having a bad diet that's mostly high on carbs they are assimilating more of those calories because they're very insulin resistant right thank you for adding those two important nuances 
I, I want to just make sure that this one point doesn't get lost though. So is, is it possible to be in a state of low insulin levels where you're, let's say on a very low carb keto diet, you, you have very low insulin levels all the time, but to be eating enough food that you still gain weight despite of, low insulin levels. Of course it is. And you can also, it's the same with people that do carnivore or do fasting. Yeah. Because I see people doing, I'm doing keto and I'm not losing weight or gaining. And you see a lot of responses that you're eating too much protein because that increases insulin. So lower down more your protein, add more fat, and maybe try fasting. Mm -hmm. And so you're also fasting, adding more uh, fat calories, eating less protein to, to what you're already doing. What happens is that, okay, maybe you're not gaining weight in some cases, but you are getting into a worse uh, body composition. You are end up losing muscle. And then again, over time, you end up gaining weight even more because you have less muscle. So you're maybe staying about the same weight, but body fat wise, your body fat is increasing and your muscle is, uh, you know, reverting or you're losing muscle. Hey, this is Ari. I hope you enjoyed this video. And one more thing before you go, actually two more things. One is if you enjoyed this particular little clip, uh, the link to the full length podcast is in the description down below. So make sure to check that out. Also, one more thing. Let me ask you a question. What if I could show you how to double your energy levels and dramatically improve your brain function, reducing your anxiety and depression to a degree on par with antidepressant drugs, but without the side effects? Sound pretty interesting? Well, there are, in fact, numerous compounds that can do this, that have been shown to do this. And I'll, I'll take you through just a few of these very briefly. One of them is rhodiola rosea. And this has been shown in studies, uh, rhodiola rosea extract, in people with stress-related fatigue and exhaustion to cut their levels of fatigue and brain fog in half in less than a month just this one compound. There's another compound uh, in my formula Energenesis called NT factor phospholipids that's been shown to help repair mitochondrial membranes and mitochondrial health to the level of healthy 29 year olds, taking people with deteriorated mitochondria who are over the age of 65, restoring it to the level of healthy 29 year olds. Um, and that has been shown in numerous studies in various types of chronic fatigue, aging associated chronic fatigue, obesity related chronic fatigue, chronic fatigue syndrome, to increase energy levels by 30 to 45% in the span of four to 12 weeks, depending on the specific study. So dramatic improvements in a very, very short period of time. Uh, two more compounds that are amazing, I highly recommend that are in my formula, Ultra Brain, along with Rhodiola rosea. Saffron extract, this has been shown to increase levels of um, improve your mood, I should say, and decrease levels of depression on par with fluoxetine, which is Prozac. And uh, not only that, but with fewer side effects, it's much safer and much less likely to cause negative effects than antidepressant drugs are. Acetyl L-carnitine is another compound that's been shown to dramatically improve brain health in older adults it also improve energy levels in older adults with chronic fatigue by between 40 to 50% in just the span of two to, th to four months. And uh, the last thing I'll mention here is acetyl L-carnitine has also been compared to antidepressant drugs and been shown like saffron to be as effective as antidepressant drugs in combating depression, but without the harmful side effects that so often occur with the drugs. So this is just a small uh, sampling of the over 35 compounds that are in my formulas, Energenesis and Ultra Brain, that are all proven to dramatically improve energy levels, mitochondrial health and brain health and much, much more. Uh, and I highly recommend that you go check these out. If you're struggling with depression or anxiety, or brain fog, if you're struggling with stress-related ex exhaustion and burnout, if you're struggling with chronic fatigue, go check out these formulas, give them a shot. I promise you are gonna be blown away by the results. And like I said, the science has already proven that these things work. 
So you don't have to just take my word for it. Uh, there's lots of research to support that. And I'll even link to some of that research down below so you can verify everything that I just said for yourself. So the links to those studies will be in the description for this video uh, down below. So check them out. Uh, check out the formulas on the energyblueprint.com. Again, uh, Energenesis is the mitochondrial formula and Ultra Brain is our brain formula. Check them out, try them out, and I think you're going to be blown away by the results. Thanks so much, and I'll talk to you again soon.